Alrighty guys, thanks for checking out the August edition of Golf Days Australia's Facebook page, Monthly Golf Show. We've got to find mm. a better acronym for that, can't we? Yeah. Although it would be up. MNGT. <laughs> MSG. It's like that Mardi Gras dance. LMGT or whatever it is. Oh, and sloppy. Okay. <laughs> so, so look, we are here at our Victoria Park mm. Golfing Precinct, I think is what it's called. Yep. Someone said it has an average of 350 to 700 weddings a year. I That's a that. lot of people getting married. It's ridiculous. They must have, well, they got, I know they've got a big venue up there for functions. Mm. They do weddings and things. But then they got the bar area and then yep. the other two venues as well so yeah it's pretty cool and the hospital right next door so <laughs> um look so we're at victoria park first we paid what did we pay well we paid uh, for nine for nine holes with the card it's 40 dollars, and that's weekday rate but on tuesdays they have the half price sale yeah so tuesdays is 20 bucks for nine holes and um whether you want to play yeah we don't we don't maybe some of the holes we don't think are yeah, it's quality holes, so maybe we play a few more. If there was a course designer, <laughs> there, yeah, it's right. Yeah. If you play Victoria Park, you know the last three holes are kind of like eating dessert at your worst, worst yeah. buffet. You just pile up on the main, and you know the dessert's yeah. crap. Yeah. So it's kind of. But actually, I'm being honest, forty bucks for nine holes with a card during the week, that is yeah. a bit on the expensive end. It like, is. It is. But you can always get on. This is a council-run yeah. course, and you can tell because, like, the trees and 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 how the the gardens are maintained fantastically. Yeah. But sometimes, uh, the actual greens. <laughs> suffer a bit but they're beautiful yeah. at the moment they're, they're always slower and cut high because yeah. it's a public course to me I'd, I'd say this could be in the top conditions i've seen these greens for a long time yeah definitely and it's um definitely. well like being a council government run course i mean there's always going to be funding isn't there yeah. well you, you'd hope so yeah um, they've, they've got a, a like 20 grands kpc all the time most yeah. courses i up would around the thousand dollar range i presume that have five yeah, yeah. that's kind of like the norm in queensland i don't know about yeah. other states let us know actually comment below how many green keepers is your course have one? My old one, Nudgee College, had one, and half of one at that. Um, <laughs> on weekends, that's every, right. Every other weekend, the course got mowed when it didn't rain. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but look, um, so mm -hmm. Victoria Park, it's no, I'd probably rate it value for money from another greatest. But then yeah. again, like you said, we can always get on. Uh, for value for money, I'd give it like a four. We can always um, get the most out of our experience, yeah. if you know what I mean. But the experience is lovely, except for the last three holes, which are like yeah. under 100 metre par threes. I think one of them is 70, 71 yeah, metres. Yeah. So they're silly. They're not even worth playing, well, like well, to, to yeah. us. They're not even worth playing. If those were mixed in after a par five, yeah. or granted I get that, it's like your 10th or one teamer. Yeah. That's a good hole. But if you put that after, say, four of those holes, you'd be like, yep. I'm tired of hitting my lob wedge. Yeah. But know? scenery and aesthetically, I, oh. I like this course. And it's an up and down hilly course on the edge of Brisbane. Yep. Well, sorry, in the centre of Brisbane. It's just next, next to the exhibition grounds and the Clive Berghoff uh, uh, Hospital yep. with a, a lot of medicine yep. uh, students. Research and stuff, yeah. So, yeah. And like, it, like the way the course presents and looks, I give it like an eight, definitely. You, um, and, and the background is amazing. Sorry about that, phone call. Yeah, uh, yeah but you get a view of the city. This is Brisbane behind us. Yeah. I don't know if you can see, I'll just twist it off a bit, yep. but that's, there you go. that's Bris Vegas. So you can't, honestly, so, isn't it funny that both St. Lucia and, and Victoria Park, both council run courses have some of the nicest views going around, Yeah. but that goes to where they are. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, could, you wouldn't get the same as, no. as you know. And, and the good thing is, you know, this is going to stay the same because council makes a lot of the weddings and the venues and the things that are up there. But under here is all, it's like, it's like, it's all uh, tunnelways and busways yeah. and things yeah. like that. So I don't think they'll ever allow it no. to go to a private course or to somebody to buy it out. I'd be very surprised. This is definitely not going to get no. housing developments. Could you on. imagine how much this would be? Oh. Well, just behind us, this is a ventilation stack with the, um, with the, uh, what is it, Legacy Way on it? Legacy, no, that, that's, yes, yeah, Legacy yeah, Way is there. Legacy Way, yeah. And the, and the busways. Yeah. Just over our shoulder over here. Yeah, so. But look, that's Victoria Park. Well, uh, we didn't vlog, we didn't do anything. We just come out. It's actually nice and refreshing to play a golf. Yeah, it was. Without the camera. Towing him up. <laughs> well, 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 okay, sorry. Before no. we move on, what would you give this out of 10? Honestly, I, I would probably give this maybe a 7.5 to an 8. I'd give a 7. Yeah. I, I, seven. I think it's... Value for money is where I'd say it lacks because yeah. it's... But then again, it's government council run, so they can kind of dictate whatever they want. Yeah. And, you know, it's... You but then again, look where we are. Yeah. Any other course would probably charge the same price anyway. It's only on a few hills that it's a bit shitty grass, and everyone yeah. else is amazing. The, um, the eighth or the ninth bar five. But, yeah. all right, so we asked um, Matt Bailey to uh, put a few kind of, few questions up on the channel, up, up on the page, so we can get a few interaction between you at home. And the first yeah. question we've asked was, here we go. We'll put it down at the bottom of the screen there. We've asked all Golf Days Australia members to answer a few questions for our next episode. Yep. When putting in competitions, should we A, take the flag out as normal, B, lead the flag in to speed up play? Let us know when you, you think. Now, the question I got lost in translation a bit. What we're trying to say is, if you had a choice, given that I think in 2019 you're allowed to have the flag in, 
do you prefer to have it in now? Like I know when we play socially, yeah. we leave the flag in on video so you can see where the hole is. Yep. And I've just got so used to doing that, mm. that it's become second nature. I mean, I even try to ram it at the pin. <laughs> so, if, um, Unless you play with a group, it's very inconvenient. Yeah, so, that's, yeah. And if you're putting off the green, I, I, I'm fully with yeah. uh, leaving the flag in. Even even when you're at like a great distance away, yeah. you know, unless you're ramming it in, it could stop your ball, and I like that. What I'd have to say that <laughs> we had 51 people say they want the flag out, okay. and seven people said they want it in. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> overwhelming. Overwhelming. A few of the comments, we'll just go, we'll pick a few here. Yep. Uh, Stuart Meredith says if the intention is to speed up play you would yeah. leave it in but only if you're playing a Stableford because a stroke event will require a penalty to finish the hole without a wipe. I totally agree. It becomes a speed thing. I think most of the yeah. rules that are changing now when it comes to drops and stuff, it's yeah. all about speed. We were just talking about Jordan Spieth's drop at the Open. Yeah. How it took 33, 32 minutes to whatever it was to 20, play. 28 or 29, yeah. something like that. But Matt Kitcher was waiting 26 minutes from his shot time. I saw him taking a knee on the towel. That's you know? ridiculous. Like, yeah, yeah, that's, like... So, I mean, but I mean, that's a far-fetched kind of... Yeah. Most other players, I think the commentators were saying, "Why didn't you go back to the tee and stuff yeah. like that?" But, well, but then again, he got a bogey anyway. He got out of it. So. I would take a, I would take a drop from that position mm -hmm. and be yeah. next to the green instead of being another hundred and something meters away. I'd give anything to be in that position. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Missionary. <laughs> Mick Ennis, fan of the show. Thanks, mate. So, ready golf is the key. We do it most rounds we play in. You would be surprised how much time you actually save. Oh yeah. Then you can take it take a touch more time over the putts. I totally agree. I mean, it's it's each to their own, and I suppose when in 2019 when this becomes a rule, yeah. it'd be good to see the old phrase, do you want the flag in or out? Yep. Well, I mean, uh, leave it in, mate, or yep. put it back in. Yep. Like, I wonder how many people are going to... When, when we were at that trophy event down at Sanctuary Cove, we talked about this on our live stream. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I was speaking to one of the guys that's on the board of Golf Australia, and he said their main focus, there are two focuses. One is junior golf, getting guys from the junior level to keep playing and continue and getting better golfers, you know, like schools and, and, and things like that. Their other thing was the speed of play because ever since range finders and things like that come in, people are taking more and more and more time. Mm. People are pinging from just 30 meters off the green to get a little pitch. It's the meme that you see on yeah. Facebook a lot on golf pages. What does it say? A guy takes a half an hour to find out how far he's got, then duffs at two meters. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of me. Real, and how many real... times do you see that? Oh, exactly. How many times do you see that? So today. So it's all about it's all about <laughs> speed of play, and I get that. And mm. we're about speed of play yeah. because when we vlog, we lose so much time. Yeah. And and even when we're playing socially, we leave the flag in. Like yeah. in a, in a round where you're putting seriously within five meters, take it out. Yeah. That's it. You know, yeah, it's a more it, it becomes more of a friendly environment when the flag comes out because then yeah. you've got a hand to somebody, you take it off them, you're all oh, yeah. you're all moving around, shit like that. You lose twenty minutes around. Oh, easily. Like, Depending on who you're playing with, but yeah. How bad you're playing too. <laughs> but so we'll go on to question two. Yeah. We've asked all Golf Days Australia members again answer a few more questions. When playing on a weekend competition, do you prefer to A enjoy playing with the same group every week or B more likely to try and join some random groups to meet new people? Now, I'll just say this right now. 50 50 down the middle voting as oh, wow. you'll see along the screen wow, okay. right there so okay. we're going to say straight off 18 for a random group 19 for the same group what do you think well i wonder if how many of those 19 18 people up would be keen to join each other for <laughs> yeah. a round. um well honestly i like both yeah. what, what i don't like about playing in the same group every week is when you go to your normal saturday comps and they're with them they play 52 times a year in yeah. the exact same one somebody of that group always wins the pro pin wins something you know that not you can say some fishy's yeah. going on, but there's always that undertone. You get, yes. You, yeah, you yeah. get certain groups, and I've experienced it with my old club, Nudgy College, um, where you just get some scores at no, there's no way that happened. But anyway, but you but, can't. But then you get the flip side where they take it super seriously. Yeah. And they're they're used to playing with the guys, and if they're yeah. not playing to their level or their believed level, <laughs> yeah, they get very serious and angry and they're the guys that play with each other every week that yep. I see throwing clubs. Oh it's at Gales I saw I saw it all the time. There was a lot of guys that were wrapping clubs around trees. Yeah. And I was like, oh they always play together. I knew That's who right. they were, they always play together every weekend. And that can for me, yeah I like playing with different people. Yeah. Like you and I, we Nick, you and I we play a lot of stuff yeah. together. But there's comps on the weekend where you and I <laughs> we love getting the two random guys, especially a couple of old fellas. Yeah. And we go, alright which hole are we going to make them laugh? Yeah. We've, um, <laughs> we'll, sne we'll sneak a few the first dirty time, jokes in there. We played, we and played they Corona just Downs. Yeah, yeah. And then it took about nine or ten holes, but then one guy started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> we got him. Oh. We got him. But then I think we played yeah. Brian Ravenberg, Virginia fan of the show. Yeah, yeah. We played the front <clears> nine, had fun. The competition was over. We played the back nine. We played a two on two Ambrose. It was me and Brian versus you and Nick. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it was two Brian's versus your Nick, yeah. and then then how, the whole funny thing about how you, you you try and get each other's head. Yeah. He this wasn't even on camera. And he got into it too. It was hilarious. Like it's amazing. <laughs> he was giving me stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was funny. He was yeah. reading parts on purpose. <laughs> yeah. He was doing the triangle, if you know yeah. what I mean. And like he twenty seven handicap. He was just out there having yeah. fun. And we were like, we just we just said, oh mate, do you want to play another nine yeah. with us? And he he did. It's so if you ever see us out there, prepare yeah. for this because we we we're the most social. If, if 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 you're at a bar the way you drink and meet people, we're kind of like that on a golf course. Yeah. You don't care who, you do get those kind of people that are, I wouldn't well, snobbish for lack of a term, but no, you really. get those people that just kind of want to, maybe they're comfortable in playing in their certain groups, and that's yeah. fine. But I think the only way the game grows and membership gets bigger is by allowing more and more in. You yeah. know what I mean? So, definitely, definitely. but look, a few comments. Um, Scott Timmons says he's happy to do either. Yeah. Mark Hield says same. It's good to play with different people. And a few people with some smiley faces. Anyway. Um, <laughs> emoji. They're emojos, yeah. yeah. Cucumber with squirting water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on to question three. Okay. Which state in Australia has the best golf courses? Now, this is going to open up a can of worms. Oh. Um, so, are you asking feel, me? Are you well, asking? hold on. <laughs> feel free to comment. Yep. Let us know which courses are the best. Now, <clears throat> we'll put the screenshot down below, but I'll tell you straight off the bat Victoria 26. Tasmania 7, New South Wales 8, WA 3, Queensland 3, South Australia 2, Northern Territory nothing. <laughs> Do they have golf in where's Northern the, Territory? Where's the love for NT? It's it, NT? NT's got a lot of those courses where on the green you have to rake the dirt. <laughs> So you got a path. Oh, the soil. The soil. <laughs> yeah, you have to rake um, it. Then the alligator, like no those, crocodiles. You'll, you'll, your stress will be down, but fuck it'll be annoying you by the end Imagine of seeing somebody else's lie. You just want to nudge it in the <laughs> hole, and the, the, the little canal, and just roll yeah, right through it. Um, but look, I mean, Victoria, I don't know if a lot of you people are from Victoria, but that's over. It's 26 of Victoria. I think it's mainland Australia, and it's, mm. it's what I would say after my first response yeah which is Tasmania yeah and the weather gets me a little bit I don't like I don't like the freezing cold but mm. I do like I do like the weather and I do like the scenery yeah and I think Tasmania and with King Island just off just off the shore Tasmania with three courses that I believe are in the top 100 I don't know I if they all are I think at one stage all three in the top for a, for a period, correct me if I'm wrong, for a period of about a fortnight, all three in the top 25. Oh, there you go. But so, I think that's when they first opened when courses yeah, naturally Yeah, so we're talking rated. about uh, Barn Bugle, Dunes, Barn Bugle, Lost Farm, Lost Farm and then King Island, King Island, what's it called? Oh, duh. The Dunes or something? Or, and um, then there's the other one? There's two. But one of them's so, yeah, very yeah, highly yeah, rated. Yeah. yeah, so you've got three courses Actually, on top. Actually, one of them's for the sale. The world's top 100. Yeah. It's Tasmania for me. And then yeah. they got Royal Hobart, and then they got a few other yeah. courses that I'd like to play. Victoria's got more of a selection, so maybe Sam people are voting for that. Yeah. And then, they, and then we got a lot of Victorians on the site. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And um, Northern Territory, though. What the fuck? I mean, honestly. <laughs> yeah, like, where's the love? I mean, Timmy went up and played oh Northern golf gosh. course up there, but yeah, 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 he did. I mean, it's it, maybe it's the community. I don't know. It is what it um, is. That's true. And there's nothing wrong with courses like that. Not the same at all. No. But if I'm gonna rank the fucking green. <laughs> <laughs> Even if there's yeah. grass on it. Uh, um, NT, you're missing out. So that's it. So, but that was our three questions this week. We'll get uh, Matt to comment below, uh, comment on the page for September's questions. Yep. If you would like a question asked, tell you what, get down there and the three questions to get the most likes, yep. we'll ask. Golf related ish. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, check out Brian's review of this month's product of the month. Alrighty, thank you Brian and Charlie. So look, this month's product of the month, that sounds kind of double, whatever, but look, the Zippy Golf Buggy, which is right there. Now I'm doing this in the backyard because I haven't had much time to play golf, probably in the last four four weeks. As you know, we've got a puppy golden retriever, Charlie's got some things going on too. So, but look, let's get into it. Look, uh, we were sent one by Zippy Golf, which was based down in New South Wales somewhere. Uh, thank you to Matt Bailey for hooking that up. But look, they've sent us the Golf Motorized all-terrain type of buggy. It's designed to go through, I think, almost a foot of water. Don't quote me on that, but it, it is fully submersible from what I'm told. We're going to do a full-on Top Gear style in-depth review. I know we're supposed to do it this time, didn't have time. But we're going to do about a half an hour review where we're going to take it into bunkers, water, we're going to try and do whatever it's supposed to do and we're going to try and get through it and we're going to see if it actually lasts so but look let's get into it so first things first now the battery here comes out as i'll show you fully comes out and then you take it out plugs into the wall and charges quite simply like that now it takes two hours to fully charge and you can get 36 holes so that's not too bad now the seat is an added extra right there but let's uh 
check out inside it. Now that's kind of like a 1990s Ferrari in there, is it that colour? But I tell you what, great quality, full, full felt. Um, and it's fully spring loaded as you see it goes down like that. It is a little bit heavy, but it's made out of metal, not plastic. Now this is the um, amphibian, which is not the remote controlled one, as you can see right there. It has a dial which here, which can go from one to five or one to six in settings. Now the fully remote control one, if we had, I'd show you, but look, honestly, it's hard to really show you this one going because all I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I'll be just going back and forward. And it's not going to be pretty much fun to watch. So, but look, um, overall looks i'd give this probably a 10 out of 10. the lime green kind of works because there's not that much to it but the wheels i'm loving the wheels as we go on right there very wide all terrain now, i haven't actually had this on the course yet but it's the price of this is 1800 dollars, which is pretty steep i would probably say to pay the extra two or three hundred dollars to get the remote control one because i've seen it on youtube and looks fantastic this one here is an next demo one that he's given us to use um yeah but look, it collapses, fully collapses, fits in the boot. It is quite heavy, but that's what you're going to get with a motorized buggy. But look, guys, that's it. So in the next few days, we're going to do a full-on half an hour review style of this. But yeah, that's product of the month. Uh, full details of the description below as to where you can get it. Um, but yeah, guys, Zippy Golf Buggies, check them out on Facebook. I'll put that link down the bottom there too. But thanks, Matt Bailey, for hooking it up. Product of the month right there, guys. So, All right, guys, that was his Zippy Golf Buggy. All the details for that product will be down below in the description. Also, a link to his Facebook page. So go along there and show some love and maybe buy one. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to throw to a new topic, a new segment this month. It's called Chuck's Idiot's Got Chuck's. Idiot's guide to golf. Chuck is an idiot. Chuck is an idiot, and this is his guide to golf. <laughs> and this is my guide to golf. So things to improve on, which I'm learning from my coach. Check it out, guys. Hi guys, I'm a middle handicap golfer, and in this segment, we're going to go through some of the stuff that I'm doing differently, and I'm getting coached differently, uh, because that knowledge and that experience when you're swinging will help everyone in the future. Um, one of the first things where people go wrong, and I just want to tackle it, is in and out swings. Uh, swings coming from the outside to in, swings come from the inside to out. And you can see on screen now I'm at the driving range. I'm just sort of demonstrating on a line an in to out swing. And then an out to in swing. So you can see on the back, on the back swing, as I take away, it's, it's on the outside of that line. So my natural swing into the ball and coming out side of that line in. The natural shot shape of that will be a slice. And that is what many people, that is the root cause of what many people are doing wrong. They have to correct that. And that, they can correct that through many different things. And, and, and it's so beneficial to go to your, take it like a PGA coach or something like that. But this is the root cause. So here I am. <clears throat> uh, so that's out to in. Now I fell over myself there because I was trying to exaggerate this so far outside the line. So now we can see here I'm hitting in to out. So this would typically produce a draw shape. Yep. So you can see where the ball left the face, just a bit right, and I drew back to center of path. So this is something that you guys can work on through shoulder alignment. That, that somebody has told me that you can never get too much uh, cross up yourself. Exaggerating that inside backswing, coming from the inside then hitting out. You can't do that too much. You want to try and start hitting draws and then the other way uh, you might start coming outside to inside, uh, hitting sort of high cut shots and things like that. Experiment with it and then go see a PGA coach guys. But that's hopefully going to help you understand what your shot's doing and why it's doing it. That's the root cause. Thanks very much for watching. Hi guys, we're here on the fourth hole of the T-block. Uh, we're just next to the road. You can hear all the road noise. Um, this is the par 4 elevated green. Uh, it's quite a generous green once you get up there, but it's blocked out by the bunkers that you're probably looking at right now. Uh, there's a few plateaus before the green that kind of catch you if you land there. Hopefully we, me playing um, silly <laughs> with a driver I can fly all that. Uh, maybe hit the upslope and just bounce on the green or be in that bunker and I can just chip out under it. It's, a, it's an easier par 4 for the bigger hitter but um, it plays tougher if you're laying up like Brian's doing with a, with a 5 iron to one of those plateaus. 280 meters uphill. Uh, 
depends which tees you play off. Yep. So I think I think we're here. So there is quite a bit of extra distance, we're far yeah. forward. Yeah, so we're here. So like being so far uphill does cut a lot of distance off, but it's 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 getting your your shot at its apex up all the way. So let's see how we go guys. I'll try and hit a little draw up there I suppose. So just behind the trees up there. So I'm going to say, we've played this hole before, so I'm going to say you're pretty close to where you were. Yeah, yeah. Which is quite a decent shot. It's so not, it's not bad. A little bit blocked, but not too bad. I suppose I've never laid up here, so I'm not too sure where I'm going to land. Um, I, would say, I would say you'd get to this what? sort of plateau there in the middle of the screen. The second, the second and a half, third plateau? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say there. Yeah. Good shot. So it's a little bit left near the path. Just a rough up there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, this is a hard shot to see. Pull struck very well. Flying well. Let's see if we can see it down, guys. Should be on. You're on. Let's yeah. see if it's close. Alrighty, so that's Charlie's tee shot right there. This is where he's going. I'm just over there. So here we go. Good check. He's rolling up the back. Nah, it just stopped. So Charlie's got that for bird. I've got that for birdie. That's incredible, like that's, I've almost got to go another foot up, it's softer. Yeah, and like just kill it here and then come back down. There's all made up there. Ah, not fine enough. Where did I go? It's a There we go. Alright guys, so that was the fourth. Now we both ended up with pars. As you can yep. see, Charlie was relatively close, so I had a bit of a chip. Yep. But um... What would you do? What would you do again? Like... I'm always going to hit driving here. Because <laughs> okay. that's just what I do. Okay. But uh, honest, but if I'm playing a stroke event, yeah. iron honestly, because iron takes a lot of the bad driver shots out of the equation. Yeah. But to be honest, I mean, it's only a snap hook really, and I don't have that in my yeah. bag. I have the mean slice, so... Well, you see what I just did, and I, I, I hit it in the perfect spot because just over this side is a bunker. So that's what I'm landing in. No, it's not too bad. I wouldn't mm. mind hitting out of that bunker. I'm confident in bunkers, that with the driver. I hit the very edge of the green just uh, behind me here, and I've rolled back um, 10 metres. Mm. But if my ball doesn't stop, I'm way down the hill, and yeah. I could be even be in the hazard. So I think a layup with a f like five iron for Brian, yeah. three iron for me, or a hybrid. Uh, to get to that plateau, I think I think that's the smart play around this course. I don't think than a short wedge. The camera's not going to do it justice. It no. is a 45 degree angle down. Oh, it's it's like if you had a piece of cardboard and you sat on it, you're going down. Yeah. Well, like the buggy the buggy struggled to get up with us. That's right. Yeah. That's it. That's it. But yeah, yeah. The Victoria Park have the greatest buggies in the world. Oh, they I work say. every time. Every time the ignition, the best ignition. If they yeah, can it's, patent it's that, great. honestly. I love how they pump the tires up too, so you feel safe when you're turning corners. It's like 300 kilos sitting in the seat. Well, mm -hmm. on, on a flat we almost went over. When you pay a green fee like I do, you don't <laughs> yeah. really care. Well, what, what can, yeah, for what you paid today. Yeah, it's all right. What can you expect? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> when you pay a green fee. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for watching this month's show. Um, Big shout out to Zippy Golf. Yeah, Zippy Golf. Uh, I can't wait to test this thing out. It is. You and, you and Christine are lucky. You get to play with this thing. I haven't tried it out yet. Well, you can see that in coming episodes. It's an all-terrain buggy, as you would have seen. But yeah. um, I think we're going to bring it out in some vlogs. Put a little camera on it. We'll just set it on its way. And uh, I can... What are those things in the movies where people sit on the train tracks and they do the, do the whole rolling shot? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are those oh, called? Yeah, it's just a panning. A panning sure, thing? Yeah, depend, yeah, right. Imagine a par 5 panning shot the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> and we just forget about did, it and just keeps I, on going. I made a movie where I put it on a chair and I did that. <laughs> low budget, low budget. So yeah. well, I hope it is. Or a skateboard. Yeah. Low budget. <laughs> on an office gas lift chair. Yeah. Yeah, but the, look, the guy was pumping there on the bed and I just, you know. What about the video? <laughs> um, 
they, I hope you like the unseriousness of the show because yeah. that's where the future is, honestly. Um, look, next month I think we're going to get into golf rates and yep. vice golf. Now, golf rates are coming board to send us to a golf course for free, oh, well. and also they're going to give us a four past four person pass to play golf with carts to one of their courses mm. in your respected state wherever you're from yep. so northern territory sorry golf doesn't exist where you're from <laughs> you're shit out of luck yeah. i don't yeah. own a rank so i can't play golf that's, that's right. and and melbourne well get on it because there's 27 of you that think you've got the best courses <laughs> yeah. in the country so yeah. yeah exactly and vice golf are going to do some demos on some balls and stuff like that talk about their hats they seem to be a bit of a trendy kind of company coming into the game yep hopefully they last yep but um yeah, thanks very much for watching the August show. Remember, comment below three questions. Anything you want golf related, golf ish related. Yep. Maybe a question that kind of ends up in golf somehow. I'm not too sure. Golf of Mexico. Yep. I don't know, something like that. And a throwback to all of our other products that we've had on Snap on Golf, Forte. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the guys who supported us. Yep. Who else have we had? Oh, we've had so many shows. <laughs> we've had two shows. <laughs> oh, we've had Slap on Products Australia. Slap on Products Forte so. Golf. Yep. Um, and Mick Innes, get behind him. Mick Innes, a charity the right there. Charity challenge. That's good. And, um, and then, yeah, get everything coming up. Thanks, That's guys. Right. There's a gentleness I have known. No, at best when it was fake.